This episode, email extravaganza. Your great suggestions, your questions, we try our best to answer them. The Mac Media Cast Episode 4 begins now. Welcome to the Mac Media Cast. I am Joseph Nilo. This is an email extravaganza episode where we are going to feature questions from you guys. If you can string words together into a coherent sentence, send it to macmediacast at gmail.com. We just might feature it here. So let's jump right in. First up, an email from a fellow podcaster and a call to action for Mac Media Cast subscribers. I got a great email question from John regarding the purchase of a video camera. Here's what he's looking for. He wants to have 24p capabilities at standard definition and high def resolutions for independent film and TV production. He'll be doing some blue screen and green screen work. He wants the camera to still be very functional and relevant six months from now. And his budget is $1,500 to $4,000 US. John mentioned specifically the Canon HV20, the Canon XHA1, the Panasonic AG DVX100B, and the Panasonic AG HVX200A. Now I've got some info, but we're looking for reviews from you, the fine Mac MediaCast subscribers. As for what I can intelligently comment on, the Panasonic DVX100B is a great camera, but it only shoots standard definition. Many of the Mac Pro podcast episodes were shot on this camera. Currently, we shoot on the Panasonic HVX200, and we couldn't be happier with the features, the quality, and the resolution of the DVC Pro HD. John did mention that this camera is a little above his price range. Furthermore, we will, in the near future, have a review of the Canon HV20 from our longtime pal and former co-host, Chuck. So far, his comments are very positive. So let's all band together and help our pal John out. Send all of your thoughts and reviews to macmediacast at gmail.com. Now definitely go check out John's podcast at johnandjohn.com. And I will warn you, uh, over 18 listening recommended. They use lots and lots of naughty words. So next up, an email with some comments from a viewer named Phoenix Bryan. Phoenix Bryan wrote me an email talking about his workflow that combined two stories we'd mentioned on the Mac Media Cast how to make the Apple reflection in Final Cut Pro from episode three, and how to pre-encode videos for YouTube from episode one. Check the show notes at macmediacast.com for direct links to these articles and videos. Now he shared screenshots of his workflow on a DV timeline. His sequence settings, DV NTSC, and his pre-encode export settings, a 425 by 318 H.264 QuickTime movie and they seem to work out for him very well for his YouTube videos. He and I had some further discussion on some green screen and keying techniques with a DV camera. So I wrote an article and shared with him my top secret tips on getting a good key with DV. A few of those tips. Light your green or blue screen as evenly as possible. This is the most important step. It should appear as closely to one color to the camera and Final Cut Pro as possible. Two, light your subject well. This includes a good strong key light and a backlight to help the subject pop off the background. For more information on this, do a Google search on three-point lighting. Furthermore, I think it's common sense, but I should also mention that if your subject is on a green screen, they should not be wearing green. I go on to describe what I call the green screen keying cocktail, a combination of plugins that I use in Final Cut Pro to get a good key. But you'll have to read the rest of the article at macmediacast.com to get those nuggets of information. We get lots and lots of requests for green screen tutorials. Be sure to stay tuned here at the Mac Media Cast, and I'm sure we'll have one in the near future. Next up, a Final Cut Pro quick tip regarding installation. I got an email from Max. He wrote, I've recently purchased Final Cut Studio 2 and installed it on my PowerBook G4. I did try moving a few folders to my exterior drive and deleting the original data. But Motion had trouble reconnecting the media for the templates, and my thoughts are that this would continue with the rest of the applications. 
So he goes on to say that he moved the data back to his interior drive. His question is, what files and folders should I move? And what do I do in each program to have it consistently read the data? Great question. I've been faced with this dilemma as well. After some digging around on the net, I came across a little detail that I'd missed. It seems that you can specify in the installation process a custom installation path for all 60 or so of the gigabytes of template materials and extras. If you have any suggestions about moving this material after installation, please send them to macmediacast at gmail.com. Next up, a longtime viewer named Gregory writes in about how to make a watermark logo in Final Cut Pro. This is something I get asked a lot, how to watermark a logo or bug in the corner of the screen of a video program. Very simple. Here is some footage for a series of cooking shows I produce for HarvestEating.com. We watermark the Harvest Eating logo in the bottom right corner of all of our videos. To make things simple, I finish all of my editing before I worry about the logo bug. Then I place a ping file of the logo on a track above everything else. This has an alpha channel transparency in it. I change the logo's composite mode to add. This combines the color values of the logo with those of the clip beneath it in the sequence. The resulting image is lighter. In this case, I adjust the opacity of the logo down to about 65%. Then I copy and paste it across the duration of the program, doing some occasional creative cuts and fades where the logo might get in the way. You can even apply a watermark to a video after the fact in Compressor, but we'll save that for another tutorial. Well, that is it for this episode of the Mac Media Cast. Thank you, everybody, for sending in your great questions, suggestions, comments. Keep them coming, macmediacast at gmail.com. Now, one thing that we get asked often is how you can support the Mac Media Cast. We do have premium content coming down the road, but for right now, all we ask is you just tell people about us, dig us, share us, uh, even go to our website and maybe click on some of the sponsored links. Um, that supports us in the meantime. So hopefully next time I see you, I'll have an iPhone in my hand and a review for you. If any of you have a review that you'd like to send in, whether it be audio, text, or even video, send it to macmediacast at gmail.com. We'll see you soon. In the meantime, if you get your hands on one, send us your, what am, uh, I have a burrito stain on my shirt. <laughs>